Hi, this is c 23 doing a tutorial on how to reverse a SHA1 hash. And so in this tutorial I'll demonstrate how it is possible to reverse a SHA1 hash provided you have enough CPU. And so the amount of CPU required would be 2 to the power of 160 hertz which as you may know uh, isn't available today even with all of our supercomputers so uh, although the algorithms exist we haven't got the hardware to render them but perhaps in the future we can uh, use those algorithms uh, to reverse SHA1 hash and so I'll show you those algorithms in the this tutorial uh, and so let's start by uh, seeing the encoder of SHA1 it is said to by many people that it is impossible to reverse but I find it as easy as pi to reverse and so uh, I'll demonstrate for you how I find it so easy the first stage is uh, you have the integers converted to hexadecimal. Each integer is eight digits long when rather the hexadecimal is eight digits long and the integers are always within a limitation that keeps the hexadecimal eight digits long. So uh, for example uh, It'll split it every eight. Uh, and uh, this here will be the first one. That there will be the second one. And uh, that is the same as uh, what is right here and here. Because, uh, believe it or not, uh, when on the adding right here it adds a number that keeps it within that boundary so it makes it as easy as uh, well you know to reverse so that's what actually keeps this HA1 as that static length and so let's get into the algorithm uh, so first part is these numbers are added uh, H0 to H4 near the beginning of the algorithm just right E they static numbers haven't been reassigned and uh, the numbers E, D, C, B and A uh, they're the numbers that you've got to retrieve, so you simply subtract, and uh, after you subtract them, you've got to put them through the formula to get the original values. So you simply uh, do the opposite here, where 10 equals A, A equals B, B equals rotate right C, uh, C equals D, D equals E, and E equals uh, a brute force attempt of this formula. And so, in this formula, you simply uh, get F and K, or you could say K and F. Uh, here's F and here's K and then uh, A is retrieved from down here so that leaves us with the variables E and word M 
we need wood and to be able to get the string at the beginning because uh, if we go to the beginning wood and contains a data array which has uh, the uh, numbers that make up the words of the import and the variable is it? e is what will bring us the next loop round to allow us to calculate the next formula and while you may think that's impossible to get because there's two variables there it is actually possible to get them both uh, if you have enough CPU in today's CPU you'd need about uh, 2 or 3 gigahertz to get in about 2 or 3 seconds and so in my attempt of uh, getting so we have uh, E in this formula here I've been able to retrie retrieve the TN value so uh, yeah in the D code I've got TN so I've worked out another formula to work out what A plus B is from just the value of C. I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, let's see. Here we go, D hasher. So we'll just quickly go over what we've done. We split into every eight characters long, then convert those hexadecimal every eight characters long into 64-bit integers, and put them into an array. Then you can uh, subtract. Where is it? Subtract those other numbers from those arrays and reassign it to A, B, C, D, and E then rotate around those variables uh, do that little bit of voodoo and uh, here's the formula I did to get word m plus c you simply keep on adding one until you get the variable term the same as the result of this formula that you found from before where val2 is the same as uh, word m plus e and uh, you keep on adding one and to save cpu you can do the same plus uh, a very large number and if it's in search hacking equal you can check if it's small or and uh, yeah once that passes uh, you'll have val2 with word n plus e and then you've just got to decipher how much is in each that's the tricky bit that requires astronomical amount of CPU that no computer on earth, even every computer on earth combined can't yet do because it would require, let's see, there's 80 rounds in a lot. Uh, it'd basically be like 2 to the power of uh, 16 to the power of 80 uh, threads and each thread would be the equivalent of making a SHA1 hash uh, and so yeah but it's not actually making a hash but rather using the same amount of CPU that it'd use of making a hash to decode 
and so it's using a formula doing the opposite to encoding but going backwards doing every like a family tree when you're going back in history how it branches out and then uh, it gets more and more combinations as it goes further back that's what this here does and so basically it will pass E or VAL2 will VAL2 will have to be split into every possible combination so like in the thread there will be this loop or this loop could be right either of and uh, it creates a new thread for every pass of this loop and then in each thread it then uh, basically uh, continues on with the next round of uh, repeating this process until it does all 80 rounds and uh, in the process it'll there'll be some dead ends most of them will be dead ends and uh, you'll find that uh, you'll find that the ones that aren't dead ends uh, will be added to the word data array and ones and uh, basically let's go back to the encoder it's difficult to explain because uh, without prior knowledge it can be difficult for one to understand I've been studying this for years, so you may not understand this. Here we go. Uh, yeah. So you'll get every combination, and then uh, you'll eventually find that some of them, uh, E has to be above a certain value. And E, when being shrunken at each loop, some of them will come to dead ends and then just disappear. So, uh, eventually you'll end up with the one thread that is the successor. And that successor will contain the word array. And that successor will then uh, come to this uh, for loop where it does the same thing to reverse this and the same process is again used to reverse this and then you come to here and uh, this is rather simple math uh, this is Let's see. Yeah, and this he where is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah and this here is a simple math deck, probably a fifth grade I could do to convert the math into a string, and uh, that's when you've got the string from the input so that's how you reverse the SHA1 hash thank you for listening